in these uh, times of difficulty and immense uh, suffering and hardships. We hear from people, my energy going down, I feel I, I got sick and the sickness not going away, my energy is down, I have a headache, I have constant pain. The Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad its immensity of realities and immense najat and salvation for humanity. In these times of difficulty your best friend is wudu, that never a moment to be outside of wudu. No matter what happens, where you are, what the circumstances, your excuse is that this is a spiritual battlefield. And not only the making of wudu to bring light upon light upon light so that on the day of judgment we will be shining alhamdulillah. But for now of dunya it was an immense secret that when you make wudu and wash with this water, pray Salatul Wudu without speaking to anyone, you have a seal of energy that's all around you. That seal is your protection and from the shaykhs whom their life is based on energy, they teach about energy, they understood early in their life that as soon as their state of wudu is not there are in a contagious or in a dangerous situation to be attacked by energy. They feel the energy, they feel the energy coming from the feet, they feel the energy coming towards their head, their face, their hands, their stomach. In every direction energy and negativity is all around us. So it means in these days of difficulty wudu is not for salah only. Wudu is for at every moment of our life to stay in a state of wudu. That we pray our Salatul Wudu as soon as we wash and we seal ourselves. So that this seal of protection is around us but that which is coming is of a spiritual nature. And you think to ourselves and, and visualize like millions of ifrit are all in the air around us and there, there was a what the name of the movie with Vin Diesel where he lands on the moon and it was all dark? Is it Riddick? Riddick. 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 Chronicles, Chronicles of Riddick. Chronicles of Riddick. Riddick. Something because every time you turn the light you could see all these demons that were looking at him. For us the same concept is that there are millions of afraid all around. They're just now penetrating the entire atmosphere all around you. So they're trying to attach themselves to insan from every direction, all their feet, their back, their face, everywhere these negativities are attaching themselves to insan. And the only thing that burns them is wudu. That you go in, when you lose your wudu you have to use the facility or you just want to make wudu. That you don't feel the energy is good, you go whoosh, make your wudu, pray your salatul wudu, seal yourself and there's an immense protection of energy. When that shield of energy is protecting you from all the negativity coming, the negativity of other people. Once we understood energy and we took a path of understanding spiritual realities that Spiritual realities is, is not the entry but it's the highest level of Islamic beliefs and understandings. From the six principles of faith, these are the oceans of faith and why you don't hear anybody talking about it because they're not passing even the ocean of Islam. So to have the understanding of the books, the faith, the angels, the destiny, all, all of the, the principles of faith is the least most talked about because it has to do with malakut and the world of light. So the reason we don't hear about it is many people are not reaching it. But when they reach to the world of light they understood everything is about energy. If you got it 
then try to preserve it. If you don't have it, you're going to be depleted. And negativity is coming to attach itself. The matrix was teaching for insan and all the humanity, we are the battery. It wants to attach itself to us to pull from us every type of energy and fires, every type of, of blessing. So our life is about staying in wudu. Our life is understanding energy, protecting ourselves and pushing away. Our life is about understanding, when we understand energy, we understand the overflowing negativity of other people. So then we have to be in wudu, we have to understand how to deflect this energy. If I understood this energy then I have to understand how to build my energy. That becomes then the concepts of muraqabah. To sit and contemplate and ask Allah to dress me, to bless me and to fill my soul with more and more light, fill my soul with every type of reality. When Allah is teaching, keep the company of Sadiqeen, Allah not concerned only physical world, but Allah's concern is always the spiritual world, that which is eternal. When Allah kunu ma sadiqeen, keep the consciousness and keep the company of truthful servants. The first priority is keep the company of truthful servants from the world of malaku and the world of light. Well, how are they going to come if we don't have wudu when we're in a, in a state of, of dirtiness? So then we have to have our wudu. How are we going to be dressed by lights and have excess positive? Because what's the purpose of meditating, build your light, come for zikr, do all these positive things and as soon as you go out you have absolutely no wudu. You don't keep wudu means then things are attaching themselves to you. If you could see, you'd see all these afrit are attaching themselves all over insan and they pulling their energy, pulling their energy, pulling until they begin to feel sick, they have headaches, they have all sorts of difficulties coming upon them. The worst of which is the world we live in now where they become sick. And once they become sick even if, if, if they have the barakah to be healed from it, if you don't understand the concept of wudu then they're going to continuously be tapping your energy and draining you. Somebody emailed that they even have a feeling that people are vampiring their energy. That people come into them with a spiritual form and begin to try to take their energy. All of these are based on the understandings of wudu. One, we don't put our face anywhere, we don't publicize our being because people whom have a nefarious character or not good intention, they can merely look at a face and begin to pull energy or send extreme negativity. So I mean they are, this is the whole reality of energy. That's why all these talks when you put them together and all the teachings together, one don't put your face out there so that people don't have access to what you look like, don't have to keep seeing you, your family, your children, your life for what? Because then you're giving this fuel to those nefarious entities. Two, if I'm in a state of wudu whoever is trying to send, the wudu is a shield from Allah That's the taqwa from Allah that you followed my law, you followed the law of the Messenger of Allah the rest is up to us. Our power, our qudra will protect you. But if you don't keep a ihtiram and you don't keep a respect for the laws of Allah and the laws of Sayyidina Muhammad why Allah going to protect? Because He wants to show the azimat and the greatness of Islam, Qur'an and Sayyidina Muhammad So those who uphold it, they're shielded by it. Means Allah provides an energy around, Allah provides spiritual beings that are all around. Then Allah begin to teach that being, make your madad. When they understood making the madad and calling upon all of these, well Allah said, I'm with Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadai, with Salihin, all of them require you to be in wudu. Could you imagine Prophet would come if you're in, in not a proper attire and, and energy? It's, it's not even a nice adab to even think like that. 
and that the Sahabi and Ahlul Bayt and the awliya fi samahi wa filar. So them, those whom are taking courses in energy and tasawwuf and spirituality in the last days, these are the highest levels of Islam. Those not teaching it, they haven't reached it. And those whom been given permission to teach it, then it's a glad tidings for those who listen. That build your energy, make your best friend your wudu and water, that safeguard yourself from every type of negative attack, every type of sickness that's coming. That way you're not saying that I have headaches, I have this, I have all of these things. You have all these things when you talk to a doctor because there's a, a, a disturbance in your field of energy. How are these things approaching you? How are these beings approaching you? If you are keeping your wudu, then you're keeping with the du'as, you're keeping with your awrad. The awrad has a tremendous faiz. We've described in other talks, when you sit and do the Naqshbandi awrad, we have a video now for those whom are new to Islam or just like to hear it that way. They hear the awrad and they can sit and do it. That is tapping in to Allah's Wi-Fi code. Everyone is familiar now that there's a Wi-Fi broadcasting everywhere, every home has a Wi-Fi, every tariqah has a Wi-Fi. Are you tapping into it or are you just happy with your device that has absolutely no cellular plan and it's not tapping onto any Wi-Fi? You're just going around saying, I, I'm you know, I'm a Muslim, I, I accepted Islam, okay, you know, big deal. You've had a bull, bullseye on your head from every shaitan now because you're Muslim and he wants to attack Muslims. But what was the rest of it you were supposed to do? All of these practices were to build us, protect us and safeguard us from a day where we thought was judgment day. But no, before judgment day there was an Armageddon which is open. And as a result of what we see of unseen forces, unseen enemies, even seen enemy, the television that propagating to you is one-eyed and that one eye is continuously talking to you instilling upon you its belief, its fears, everything it wants you to believe and you watch without wudu, then imagine what type of energies are coming. Any type of music you listen to, it's an energy. What type of creatures come through this energy and this vibration? And you don't have wudu and you listen and they're coming in and vibrating, there's absolutely no shield of protection. And that sound and music comes straight into the heart and, and begin to affect. Come into the mind, infect the mind, infect the heart, the television, the, the everything around us is based on energy. So whatever Sayyidina Muhammad brought was not only for judgment day or for salah, that this is our, our life survival in these times of difficulty. How to wash, how to keep ourselves under that tajalli, how to keep ourselves with energy, how to build our energy. And when you don't have access to water and how not to lose your energy. In days where everyone wants to take off their head covering, your greatest protection was to make sure your head is covered. Now shaykhs can't help who wants to, even their family don't want to, that's not our concern. We are responsible for whom Allah sent, not even our children. If they don't want to listen to us, that's in Allah's hands. Don't ever compare yourself, oh the shaykh's kids don't cover it, I don't have to cover it. No, no. You're sent by Allah as a student to listen and to be taught. The other one born to the shaykh, that's in Allah's hands. They don't want to listen, you're not going to beat them into submission, that they don't want to listen. But this is the teachings of the shaykh who inherits from Sayyidina Muhammad that tell them my sharia and my sunnah is their greatest weapon against shaitan. When you think you have fear that I'll take my cover off, no that's now shaitan telling you surrender your Islamic flag and identity and you'll be safe in our territory. No, no it's hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel. Allah is my defender. Fear no one but Allah and though I walk through the valley of death I fear no one because I know that Allah is with me. He said, we walk through airports with all our cover with everything, there's nothing to hide. 
Allah wrote the plan, if Allah wrote for them to be mean with you, He's going to write for them to be mean with you. Allah wrote the plan, it's a program that already has taken place. So why Allah would write the program, you're safer without your hat. He made a sharia and then he wrote in the program also, yes take your hat off you're safer. No that's your nafs and shaitan whispering to you. Why? Because he knows it's important and you'll be protected. As soon as you take it off you're going to be attacked by your head. And then you take it off more and you take it off more and before you know it you're going and exposing your neck, your head, your every part of your body. And congratulations you have now entered into Hizb shaitan where he thinks everything is safe and they're about to receive the azab of Allah Everything that Prophet brought for us is an immense shield. You keep your cover, keep your beard, not, not for ladies, just the men. <laughs> keep your sunnah, it has a power if Allah and Prophet gave a power to Sayyidina Sulaiman he's not going to give to Ummah Muhammad but we don't even know Islam, somebody was commenting back, why did you defame Sayyidina Sulaiman that he, he took a ring from Prophet Say, because you probably don't know Islamic uh, history. He did take a ring and he asked Allah for a might and for a power. He asked Allah for power because he was poorer than his people. So, Ya Rabbi give me a kingdom that you've given to no Prophet of yours. And he said, I'm going to send you a ring and in that ring is an authority. And by the power of the ring he was given an authority. Whose ring was that? It was the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad And completely misunderstood every verse of Qur'an, he was misquoting every type of ridiculous thing. It's amazing the understanding that they have. Where were we? The power of the sunnah. Everything that Prophet brought for us is a protection, the dress of modesty has a power. The beard has power, the siwak, everything now is, is going from my mouth, trying to send its ifrit into my mouth, into my mouth, into my mouth. Why? So that this mouth has its negativity and its energy to go into my heart. You know from your mouth where does it go next when negativity is in your mouth? Goes into the mouth, mixes with your water and food and enters towards your heart and into your blood system. Why, why? Why then to do that? Prophet gave to us the siwak, you use your siwak. All of the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad is a defense and a shield of all this negativity that's coming and opening itself. The muraqabah, the meditation, all the practices is to get an excessive amount of light so that that light gives me my guidance and like a light at the end of the tunnel to understand what's coming, what type of protection I'm supposed to have, what level of faith I'm supposed to have. Pray that Allah give us more and more understanding that we keep ourselves in wudu. People whom are complaining headaches and pains and sicknesses and difficulties, first thing is that please keep your state of wudu. And tell your friends whom complaining, relatives whom complaining that follow what Prophet brought and make wudu and keep your state of wudu. Wudu is not only for salah but at all times and if you don't have access to water, again that was we went from that direction because people are putting things on their body that say, oh I can't make wudu with these things. I would think in these difficult and dangerous times don't put anything on yourself that you think would be questionable for your wudu. That could be a means in which shaitan enter to you to attack. So anything you think that stops you from your ability to make wudu and we don't have to go into all the details and every woman understands that answer already. Don't do things that would block your wudu. In a day in which difficulty and a barrage of attacks are coming, do as best as you can so that you are in a state to be washed and that when you do wash, your washing is a ceiling. If you don't have access to water then you find clean soil. You take to the beach a nice clean area of soil that no, no dog or creature has been on or you can even go home and wash that soil and you put it in a little Tupperware and everywhere you go you can just tap onto that dust 
and make tayahmum and that you make a dry wudu with very clean soil. If you have a, 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 a different organization they use a moor in which they have for holiness and they believe this to be mixed from Karbala with the, the dirt of Ahlul Bayt, you can take that more for wudu, it's clean soil. So any type of clean soil you make your tayammum and then you can continuously be in your state of wudu. Mm. That's an important reminder for myself during a time of spiritual attack and, and immense sickness everywhere. These remedies have been given to us by Sayyidina Muhammad Inshallah so, mm. that we'd be inspired to use them, uphold them just by the, the honouring of what Prophet brought, mm -hmm. how much barakah and blessings come into our life and mm -hmm. what Allah keep away from us for continuously reviving the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and keeping an ihtiram and a respect for it inshaAllah. Hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Click the link now to subscribe.